listening throughout the length and the breadth of This evening, throughout the length and the breadth of our country, nearly 10,000 ANC local government candidates have made a solemn pledge to the people of South Africa. Candidates have made this pledge as part of the ANC's commitment to involve ordinary community members in our candidate selection process so that our candidates understand that their first responsibility is to the people that they represent and not themselves. My name is Ed Wayam, President of the World of the World of the The candidates that are gathered here and across the country in all our nine provinces reflect the diversity of the people of our country. My name is Nero Hayaba, World Council Candidate for World 24. I'd like to encourage everybody to come out and vote so that the ANC wins with an overwhelming majority. In making this pledge, they undertake not to rest until all Ladies and gentlemen, uh, comrades and friends, a very, very good morning to all of you who are here with us at the ANC Media Center in, at Lutuli House, as well as those who have joined us across the length and the breadth of our country online. A very, very good morning and welcome to all of you. We're here today to launch the ANC Local Government Barometer, an instrument of monitoring and evaluation that is designed to monitor and track and ensure that we are compliant with the pledge that you have just heard all of our councillor candidates take. That pledge has been called the Ikuruleni Pledge because that is where it was first made. It's also appropriate that it is called the Ikuruleni Pledge because Ikuruleni is the home of Oliver Reginald Tambo, a giant of our liberation struggle whose 104th anniversary we celebrate today. And therefore it's fitting that on this day we launch this ANC Local Government Barometer which will become a quarterly monitoring and evaluation instrument and a report card by the ANC which will provide, firstly, an update on the degree to which we are keeping our commitments made in our manifesto, secondly, to track the progress or not and the challenges in governance, financial management, service delivery and other key areas of local government, also taking into account and responding and acting upon reports by National Treasury the Auditor General, COGTA and SALGA. Thirdly, a regular response uh, on what the ANC, as a, both as a party and in government, is doing to address these challenges. And fourthly, to monitor whether ANC councillors and local government leadership are living up to the Ikuruleni Pledge. This must be seen in conjunction with a number of interventions made by the ANC to address some of the challenges in local government. And those include the way in which we have gone about choosing our candidates for this election, the councillor pledge, the contract of deployment, and the fact that we, all of our mayoral and other candidates will be subjected to a very rigorous interview process. But it's not for me to talk about those things because we have a very, very distinguished panel here who will address those matters. 
And it gives me great pleasure, first of all, to introduce, not that she needs introduction, Comrade Jesse Duarte, the Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress, who amongst many of the tasks that she has executed in her two terms as Deputy Secretary General would be a very rigorous process of monitoring and evaluation of our branch structures and our municipalities. She was on the ground evaluating more than 40 municipalities during her tenure. And I think she's very, very well equipped to speak on monitoring and evaluation. Secondly, we are joined by Deputy Minister Tembesile and Kadimeng, the Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Um, she is the recent past uh, president of Salga. She was also a deputy president of the United Cities and Local Government of the World. So in a sense, she was a deputy mayor of the world. And also, I think more importantly, she was the mayor of Pulukwane, a wealth of experience in local government. She will be introducing our local go government barometer. We are also joined here by a distinguished panel of mayors, Comrade Mzwandile Masina, the mayor of Ikuruleni, formerly the deputy minister of trade and industry, thus bringing a wealth of intergovernmental experience. He has the distinction of leading a municipality that was the only metro to obtain a clean audit with zero, and I repeat, zero irregular expenditure under his watch. He, under his watch, Ikuruleni has also taken forward the project of establishing an erotropolis. Um, he is also the author of future realities, coalitions in South Africa, reflections on coalition governments in metros. But that is not what we are here to talk about today. We're also joined by Mayor Jesta Sidel. She is the district mayor of Ihlanzeni District Municipality in Mpumalanga. She's been a councillor since the year 2000, and she has served as the speaker of the city of Mbombela, and subsequently she's been the district mayor. Um, I think importantly, she then also has experience of both the district and local levels of, 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 gov of local government, and she will be able to talk about the very important matter of the district development model. To her right, we are joined by Mayor Nomvuyu Mpuselwa. She is the mayor of Senku, municipality in the Eastern Cape, a municipality that has the distinction of for seven years in a row obtaining a clean audit. Despite being a small, poor, and rural municipality, this has happened during her two terms of, as mayor. She's a former teacher and deputy principal of a school, and she credits the stability in her municipality at a political and administrative level to teamwork, but also, importantly, consequence management. Um, we are joined virtually uh, also by Professor Yap de Fisser, the director of the Dula Omar Institute at the University of the Western Cape. He's the co-author of Local Government Law of South Africa, and he's published very, very widely on issues of local government, good governance, uh, federalism, and related topics. And last, but very, very definitely not least, we're joined virtually by Comrade Joel Nechitenje, the Executive Director of the Mapungubie Institute for Strategic Reflection. Uh, Comrade Joel is uh, also a member of the National Executive Committee of the ANC. He's a visiting professor at the Witt School of Governance, and in the past he has also been part of the National Planning Commission and headed the Policy Coordination and Advisory Services, PCAS, in the presidency. So I think we have a very, very distinguished and well-equipped panel uh, to deal with the 
ANC local government monitor, um, barometer. Um, last, but very, very definitely not least, is uh, Comrade Figile Mbalula, the ANC head of elections. He will do a uh, closing remarks after the keynote address by the Deputy Secretary General. But for now, uh, it gives me great pleasure to call upon uh, Deputy Minister Tembi Nkadimeng to come and introduce our ANC local government barometer. Thank you very much, Comrade Tembi. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Andres. You are slightly taller. I just hope I don't disrupt the connection that has been nicely organized here. Let me start by greeting Comrade Jesse, our Deputy Secretary General, my fellow colleagues, uh, the mayors, uh, uh, Comrade Mbalula, and our friends uh, from the media. A very good warm morning. We all know, of course, on the 1st of November, a proclamation has been made for the local government elections, taking place in the coming three days, if I'm to be precise. And they are coming at a context and a background that we all know in the brief history of our democratic dispensation in local government, which started post-94, local government saw such of a development from year 2000. Now that suggests to us on the 5th of December, local government will be turning 21 years in the democratic dispensation of South Africa. So the founding fundamentals of 1995-96 local government elections ushered 843 transitional municipalities. And the context is important here. We were trialing a situation of moving from 1,200 municipalities, combining them. For example, Mayor Masina will be able to tell you how Eguruleni was formed up from a small Jimistin municipality, uh, uh, springs and whatever, to create what Eguruleni is uh, today. And a subsequent work in refining the boundaries and the walls of municipalities was done across the years, resulting currently in 257, which we had. This 257 started in the year 2016, the term that we are ending now. The term of 2011 had 284 municipalities. And this development in terms of wall-to-wall -wall boundaries of municipalities is informed by how to club economic development and realities of municipalities to ensure that they are sizable, manageable, developmental, and be capacitated to deliver the services that they are. So the fundamental of all these municipalities is about the restoration of dignity to our people, dignity which they never had. And it is enshrined and supported by the white paper of local government, uh, which was adopted and enacted as a municipal structures and system act from the post-2000s years. So these two Bibles then ensure that we create a decent quality of life for all citizens. The fundamentals of the white paper then assumed a tariff service structure that each and every one of us must pay for the services that they are receiving. That is water, that is electricity, waste removal, sanitation, sewer, etc. But upon review, President Tabombegi in 2000 launched a free basic uh, service at municipalities. And these free basic services came as the African National Congress realizes that over the 105 municipalities that we are having called small and rural, the highest percentage of people residing there do not even afford the services. So in the year 2000, we moved from a zero allocation of an African child to access of free basic services to today a 3 million, uh, 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 just above 3 million. The census uh, report is, is, is available to, to give us a free basic I will articulate it a bit uh, on it. Capacitating and the selection of our candidates, uh, 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 Comrade Andres spoke about it just now. How do we maximize now this policy now dealing with in the African National Congress, but also putting a strong emphasis on the what and community level? 
So as he has correctly put, we are putting this barometer to you and the world today to say it will be a quarterly report cut of the African National Congress. And it has its five deliverables, that is service delivery, as enshrined in our objectives of a local government. Objective number two, it says we must provide water, we must provide electricity, we must provide good roads, we must ensure uh, safe communities, we must ensure socio-economic development in our areas. But that is coupled with the support of municipal support uh, improvement plans, our financial recovery plans for our weak municipalities, our capacity development, particularly at the rural and, 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 and urban municipalities, and political stability of what we need to be able to assist and assess uh, on a quarterly basis to take uh, the trajectory higher into what we are dealing with. So key structures are in assistance in terms of us compiling reports and following up that is your SAGA Auditor General who publishes her reports at every end of the cycle of the financial year to give us the gist of the performance of our municipalities. Now we look into the, the proportional representation of local government which also shows in our structures at local government of course uh, some parties do not have the policy of equal representation of women. We are sitting today as a sphere at about 46% uh, of women. But you know the policy of the African National Congress is 50 plus one. In fact, Congress, when we launched and uh, 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 inaugurated mayors as the African National Congress, we had 57% of female mayors in, 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 in 2016. And we, we want to take that even higher and higher. We are seeing signs of growth, uh, or more inclusion in our, our, our participatory democracy at work. Uh, in 2016, we had um, uh, 205 uh, parties contesting elections. In, in 2021, uh, which is the elections we will be holding now, we are seeing around 325, such a sharp increase. Uh, with over 900 uh, uh, candidates of independence. In fact, there is a notion which goes um, uh, candidates independent this time around because there's friction in the NC. That's actually not true. In 2016, there were 855 independent candidates. There's only an increase of 45. There are 900 candidates. So in 2016, we were sitting more or less at where we were, 2.3. We've just moved up by 25 candidates, I mean 45 candidates, to take us to 2.5 of candidates that are contesting elections. And in 2016, they garnered 321 or 41 votes collectively. So I think we need to be able to say there is a, a good interest in local government, but we are here to present who we are and what we are about in local government. So of concern to us is the diminishing number or the, the stagnant, uh, small growth of participation and voter turnout of young people between the age of 18 and 90 year old, which has dropped between 33% uh, to around 19% as we compare uh, the, the, the voters' roles and the candidacy of what we have. But to promote as well to ensure the strength of the African National Congress in the belief and the trust in young people, 25%. Uh, of our candidates come from the youth category. So South Africa, like many, uh, uh, many very few countries, is engaged around the enhancing of the role of traditional leaders. And not only in talking, you will know uh, legislations like SPLUMA, which ensure that there's proper spatial and land planning in municipalities across the areas where there are traditional leaders. The president just launched a small town in Kuzana village, just outside Elim to create a better posture of what the Act intends to do, turning communal land, which is under traditional authorities, to magnify it into what a, 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 a viable municipality could be. Integrated administrative system, we know it, 57% of municipal staff is employed by uh, metros. And this shows that, which means, therefore, the entire 105 uh, municipalities and 44 districts just share the remainder of about 35 coming out of the 100. That suggests, therefore, that there is more need to equip small and middle municipalities to ensure 
that they are stronger and they are also able to attract. So if you look closely and take a combined picture, an estimated 202, which is 78% of municipalities have little technical capacity. And some of you may know that that is as a result of the grading of municipalities. It's easy for a city of Johannesburg to attract a chartered accountant. It is easy for a city of uh, Cape Town to attract a, a, a technical director who's fully qualified as an engineer because they'll be able to pay a, mar a market-related uh, salary. But in Sengo municipality, with a distinction, eight uh, clean audits in a row, she's unable to attract because I think she's graded grade three or grade four, which means a salary of that engineer is somewhere around 500, 600,000 in a rural uh, municipality. And these are disparities that we are trying to look into. So building initiatives to assist such municipalities to, to deal with the serious uh, challenges that they are, they are facing. Infrastructure delivery, we tend to focus more on state-owned enterprises, but it is a fact that we now need to know that at local level, we deliver more infrastructure and services as compared to the two, and ensure the household uh, uh, access to water. For example, we were at about 88% in, in 2018, and we were up to about 84% in the uh, uh, States SA. 2019. So we have seen growth in the five categories in average of about 8.2%, which just suggests that we need to up our waste collection in most rural municipalities to be able to live by all the imperatives of what the system of free basic services would want. Financial management, some of the areas which we have got proper strength plan, we have piloted, we are piloting five KG, uh, KPIs which have been approved by the Auditor General. Uh, uh, Mayor Masina will talk to them uh, mostly. We have put them at the metros, and they've been able to assist in ensuring that they equip that. Our next phase in the beginning of this term was starting with the uh, KPIs in the local and small municipalities. But I would want to emphasize this point. There's a lot of progress that has been made even in auditing and, and, and the financial management of municipalities, contrary to the popular view and what it is said on a day-to-day -day basis. 20 years ago, Combridges, we were sitting with only 20% of municipalities who were able to receive unqualified audits. And today we are able to have 45%. So we have moved from 20 to 45%. And in some instances, for example, in 2008, 14% was able to submit books and were beyond the percentage now, which suggests that very few municipalities now sit with the challenge of being unable to offer what the AG needs at the end of every August of a financial year, of a calendar year of a municipality, contrary to the inception of municipalities. Of course, we still focus on that 14% that is still, in our view, a problem to make sure that we diminish it. And we have a program of massive support, uh, massive audit support plans, which deals with this. But there's also no relationship that uh, a, a clean audit municipality uh, is corruption free. Which the, the audit is about how did you utilize the funds. There could still be issues on how you didn't do it correctly. And that is why a, a, a celebration of no irregular uh, uh, funds being fund, it's, it's one of the things that we need to do. In terms of the partnership and international planning and, 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 and grading of municipalities, we also are looking in ensuring, as you may know, that there is a policy and a program that has been launched by the president of DDM. This is going to look into the 60% of the income which comes into metros and cities and larger towns, but equip the small 11% of the municipalities that are still unable to get the return from the poor communities. So it means, therefore, as local government, we are responsible for 36% of the constitutional functionalities or functions of government, yet our budget is allocated at 9%. And there is a local government economic review with National Treasury that was beheaded to ensure that we move from this 9.1 fiscal allocation to better allocation standard. Integrated planning, we have almost finalized, Comrade JC, the DDM1 plan. So we're sitting at 
finalized DDM plans today, and 14 municipalities are at their second third drafts, with only three still outstanding, two in Guazulu Natal and one in the Western Cape. Remember, our DDM model is based on the eight metros and the 44 districts, which give us the 52 roundabout economics plans, which have got municipal support infrastructure programs to ensure that we, we use the infrastructure as catalytic growth for our municipalities. So the, the thinking of the DDM crosses over the boundaries. For example, a linking of economic uh, returns of one municipality next to the other. So we don't think of economic recovery and planning only in terms of boundaries of municipalities. If this also extends to create a corridor of development, you clap such, you create such economic development. So at a quarterly basis, Comrade Jason, we'll then be able to say, Municipality A, Department of Education have invested so much, Department of Social Development has invested so much, we have been able to say this is how much we have touched the life of a person who is residing at a particular spot. Ethical conduct, I will have to talk about it. We have done quite a lot of work on it, and some of you are aware that the President has just signed uh, the Municipal Structures Act Amendment, which takes effect on the 1st of November, uh, the day of the elections. It capacitates speakers. The pledge by our councillors, candidates, which was done in the past week, has its fundamentals on this code of conduct, which will ensure that there's no nepotism, there's no malfeasance in where the areas where the ANC governs, but also there's improving in capacity development and consultation in involving uh, com communities, one in selecting of our candidates, but two, those candidates going back to their communities to ensure that there's input and driving of deliverables of those local municipalities by the communities themselves is a key and a strategic point. So these powers also ensures that we move and strengthen our impact for the M uh, 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 oversight role towards a SCOPA and a, a binding memo of council uh, comrades who will be sending uh, as part of this barometer a binding memo to all our councillors and they will adopt them in their councils where the African National Congress has won. The mayors will sign performance agreements which are linked to these uh, uh, district plans, which are economic hub. So you will be able, like you have done with me when I was a mayor of Pulugwane, to say, we have given you a responsibility <laughs> to take this municipality into a metro. What have you done? That was a delivery card you had for me. But the delivery card now, we want to enhance it as well link it to DDM, strong community participation, a target, for example, like in 120 days, as per the legislation, all our municipalities must have elected their award committee members. So you'll be like, where are your award committee members? When were they elected? Have they started working? How do they link with CTWs? How do their roles vary? How does one source an ID for an old woman who's sitting in a particular ward and is not receiving pension? a very detailed uh, uh, delivery card on what is supposed uh, to be. So we also, as part of that card, we'll have a local government anti-corruption forum, which was established in 2020, and the chairmanship is under ICU. It is supported by ourselves, DECOC, and we provide secretariat to that, is attached to the card. Because remember, what has been signed by the president also enforces the speaker that in 14 days, after any other discovery of malfeasance, you should have reported to COPTA, you should have reported to the police. So you'll be dealing with these issues directly as you quarterly assess your municipalities to ensure that they link up into the national anti-corruption strategy that has been adopted. Let me also touch about the public perceptions of local government. The survey of 2016 has been very clear. It talks about the provision and the reliable drinkable water, the cost of electricity, insufficient and poorly maintained sewer, and the waste removal, which are placing in some of the municipalities, particularly dysfunctional. We have been able to create those municipalities, also ourselves in the ANC. We don't use a parameter that is used by government. Yes, we use a parameter which says, what is the municipality at? What is it supposed to do? What are the difficulties? And how could it move forward to ensure that we build a South Africa that we would want uh, to deal with? But we have been able to create, as the African National Congress, a social security basket in all our municipalities. For example, the local access to public schools has moved to around 69.1%.
COVID has been the greatest, has created the greatest silver lining for the DTM planning. You have been able, in one room, to get a school principal, to get a mayor, to get a, a social worker, a psychological service from health, to be make sure that you take care of everybody else with one just command council sitting at national, a premier gathering everybody at the provincial level, a district mayor gathering all the mayors at the local level and dispensing all the services under a pandemic. And this is where the fundamental of our ANC program comes at, right up to a police station down. Yes, we still have to improve there. We're at 46 percent in terms of crime alertness in our municipalities, but our plan is to equip the community safety services of municipalities to link up with their police and police station and provide extra care uh, to our needy communities. Service delivery strides, I won't take much, but yes, I should be singing about it. Municipalities are paying for more consumers before. So when I'm saying it's, 300, it's 3 million rather of indigents, it means even a poor municipality like Sego, though it doesn't have money, it still offers free basic services to a granny who can afford 6,000 uh, or 6 kiloliters. And if you say 6 kiloliters, it sounds like a small thing. Comrade Jesse is 6,000 liters free on a month to month basis. So the strategy of the African National Congress in its municipalities is that we must never cease, even though we are short of funds, to make sure that there's no person who gets disconnected who is an indigent payer or receiver who is supposed to do that. And then we give free uh, uh, 50 kilowatts of electricity to this indigent. I must emphasize, Congress, this is minimal. Affording municipalities like uh, Eguruleni, Polokwane, for example, we're giving around uh, uh, 100 kilowatts of electricity instead of 50. We were subsidizing uh, water at about 7,000 liters, uh, 1,000 extra instead of the 600. So the assessment and the affordability of municipalities creates more in other areas where it is possible. But the strength here is that even in municipalities, where we have, in one way or the other, have to reduce what we are spending in capacity development areas to make sure that our poor people are taken care of, we do that. So the ANC performance, we have won with the majority of 50 plus one in over 75% of all municipalities in the country. Comrade Jesse, we still live in a differentiated country where apartheid inequalities still persist. I'm going to show you just out of interest on migration further depletes the skills and the tech space of these areas. Our people tend to move more to metro and urban centers and, 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 and that moves the tech space away from the rural municipalities. If you compare, for example, the African National Congress and what, where it governs mostly, comparing it to the Democratic Alliance, for example, only 26% of the uh, uh, personal taxation uh, is, is, is in the municipalities that are led by us compared to the ANC average, I mean, rather, the, the, the ANC, which is at the 30%. So if you look the majority municipalities, 163 led by the African National Congress and DA19. The average GDP in 2015 in the uh, ANC municipalities was 11.5 billion compared to a 28 billion in the 19 municipalities of the DA. So it shows that we have got more people whom we are servicing who are unable because of the, pers of the shrinking personal tax regime base who are able to pay. In the budget average of 2021, the ANC has 1.2 billion. The DA has 3.9 billion. So we do double funding, if you may want to say it, in ensuring that we provide the so needed infrastructure development that municipalities must give in comparison to the other areas. So even if you look into payment, into appointments, you show that the national average, for example, of full-time employees, 4,561 citizens will be, will be serviced in, uh, in comparison to a municipality, for example, small in Northwest, where the ratio is 10,000, which means the little staff that you have in Northwest service over 10,000, well, a small municipality, it services around 
uh, 4,000. So the percentage of uh, vacancies is the same as well. For example, Eastern Cape spends around 14,000 per capita. A small municipality on Ongoma in Guazulu Natal spends around 1,000 per capita. So there's a 13,000 difference in between one that is an uh, overstrand municipality in the Western Cape and one in the deep rural of Ukanongoma uh, in Guazulu Natal. So we are consistent in finding the significant uh, 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 development and ensuring that our people provide access to basic services. I, I can see Comrade Andres is looking at me. Oh, I'm still good. He says, mm -mm. So we, we are using such case in points that we are able to demonstrate to our people that we need thorough analysis of municipalities to come to a better understanding of what the situation it is about. What are our ongoing actions as um, the last part that I would want to take as the African National Congress we want to reduce the duplication of structures, Comrade Jesse, and the DDM is about that, combining everybody else, as I've shown an example of our social security basket, which starts from social services which are not created or given by municipalities, but by health, education, and whatever, because all of them are localized in a ward in a particular municipality somewhere. We need to address the underfunded mandates of local government where we're dealing with the 46% that is supposed to offer services versus the 9% allocation uh, of the budget. We also have to deal with the uh, fiscal speed to improve financial resources to small municipalities like Sengu. We also have to improve the architecture of the state in enhancing the DDM process and explore the increase in the number of single-tire municipalities. We also have to deal with the capacity, uh, the sphere, and ensure that our service delivery model and a single public service works for us. And I've made this grand example about COVID, bad as it is, an outcome for a country in a, in a pandemic, but it has shown us that as government, we can get into one room, all of us, and be able to singularly implement uh, 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 all government targets and what is needed. We also commit ourselves in enhancing the ethical and a capable state. You will note that we have signed, we have dealt with National Treasury, the, 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 the consequence management framework, which is what councils will be signing at the beginning of the term. And we're emphasizing that we need to be able to have a more flexible and a simplified. I just hope uh, uh, Mayor Sidel could be able to touch a little bit on that. I wouldn't expand, but it takes no less than 87 regularities for a municipality to be able to tick their budget to be correct for assessment by national treasurer. Whether you call it M-score, line-by-line budgeting, all the items, and it's applicable even into a smallest municipality. I mean, you have a municipality of 11 councillors, 11 wards in the Northern Cape, and have to go through all this, and still you have 230-something of wards in the city of Johannesburg, but the rules are the same and they have to tick the box the same way. And it is becoming financially not viable for municipalities. One, to pay for that service through salaries and, and bigger finance division, but also then still pay for the AG, including your internal audit, in order to come up with a, a, a funded mandate and a funded budget. There is a plan. We are currently sitting with around 106 um, municipalities which have got uh, budgets which are not uh, funded, meaning they, they are unable to attract the resources that the communities need to pay for. And I'm emphasizing this because often it is thought that they are dysfunctional because they've misused the money. No. Sengu has no money, as we are talking, but they're not dysfunctional. Uh, they, they've not misused anything, but what we need to do is a proper allocation of what they're supposed to be getting to accelerate uh, the delivery of our people. Our ACT integrated transport system and ensuring that we deal with the firm consequence in rooting out corruption and the mismanagement in municipalities. The housing element still is not a municipal function except in metros, yet the housing element is, co is coordinated by local municipalities. There has to be harmonization between those ministries and municipalities for us to accelerate audit and make sure that houses are made available, but also to put a partnership with regard to all who are staying in a municipality, in a local town, to ensure that they claim and own that municipality. Thank you very much uh, for the time.
Thank you very, very much. Uh, Thank you very, very much, uh, Comrade Tembi. Uh, that, I think, was time very, very well spent. And thank you very, very much for uh, taking us through the ANC Local Government Barometer, um, condensing, I think, the key themes, um, but adding to that your wealth of experience within the local government sector. Thank you very much for that. Now to, to discuss... Um, the local government barometer. We have uh, our panelists, and I would like to start by inviting Mayor uh, Jesta Sidel, the mayor of the district municipality of Ehlanzeni, to come to the podium and uh, share with, her, with us her experience and perspectives of local government and the barometer. Mayor Sidel. No, thank you very much, Comrade Nell, for the opportunity. Let me extend my warm greetings to the DSG, uh, Comrade Tembi, Deputy Minister, my colleagues from local government, all the media houses present, and to those that are following on the different social media platforms, receive my warm greetings as well. I think, Chair, uh, starting by acknowledging the fact that UFSIS Tembi has really laid a very solid foundation for me to share probably a good story on how the Ethan Zeni District Municipality is going about uh, executing its mandate. Probably to start by indicating that as Ethan Zeni District Municipality, we strongly believe in the vision that says our municipality uh, needs to be strengthened. Not only our district municipality, and I want to believe all district municipalities who are also supporting local municipalities, uh, in their respective districts are agreeing that we really need to have a sound political leadership and a strong organizational capacity. We must also indicate that we have done quite a, a lot of good work in as far as provision of basic services is concerned. But however, uh, one must indicate that there is still a lot for us to do and we cannot confidently say, uh, indeed, we are having municipalities that are fully functional. Indeed, there are those that are functional. Uh, we can also be in a position to say uh, we have municipalities that are responsive, effective, efficient, accountable with a sustainable uh, system of government. Probably, Chair, uh, going back in terms of the 21 years of local government, the 21 years that we've uh, transversed, uh, Chair, we should be understanding it uh, under the context that when you are oppressed or suppressed, the oppressors do not empower you and capacitate you to lead. So as local government, starting 20 years ago or 21 years ago, we had to hit the ground run, uh, running because there were a lot of expectations from our communities in as far as the provision of basic services is concerned. Whilst doing that, uh, Comrade Tembi has uh, really indicated the, the, the master document, the Bible, uh, that we draw our mandate, probably to appreciate Section 154 of the Constitution that lays the foundation as to how national province should be supporting uh, municipalities to execute their mandate. We must also uh, reflect on section 152 of the constitution that outlines the objects of uh, local government. Indeed, as Ethanzeni uh, uh, district municipalities leading four, district, uh, four local municipalities uh, in the Ethanzeni district, we must indicate today that we really believe that uh, good governance is important, ethical government, because one of the objectives talk about the provision of a democratic and accountable uh, government. In as far as the systems that you've put in place, your structures, uh, you have your council, uh, you have your MPEC committee sittings, your section 79 committees of council that plays an oversight on the work of executive. I must also indicate, while still on that one, we have the Structures Act, 
as well. Uh, recently, we have just uh, received an approval of the Amended Structures Act of 2021 that outlines the processes to be undertaken in terms of managing the transition, uh, transitional period, as well as also outlining the service delivery model that uh, Comrade Chambi has really reflected on the district development model. Supporting that, uh, that amendment, there is also a circular that went out to all municipalities, uh, signed off by National Treasury, Department of Cocta, as well as SALGA, uh, that is uh, representing uh, municipalities, which is the South African Local Government Association. Probably I would not go on and talk of, all, of the other prescripts that really uh, governs a local government. But going uh, to, to, to the question of objects in terms of what the district has really achieved uh, thus far, in terms of uh, involvement of communities and community organizations, I think we have done fairly well as a district of Ethland Zeni, being a rural district, to really acknowledge the fact that we are having 70% of our wards that are falling under traditional authority. We have a, a gazetted 14 a traditional leaders that are sitting in our councils. They do form part and inform decisions that we are taking in council that affect uh, their areas where they are leading. We do also uh, have our traditional uh, local councils and the district is supporting not only the district of Ethland Zeni, but the other districts as well are doing, particularly on Kangala and uh, Ethland Zeni, which I want to probably invite other district municipalities in the country to draw uh, best practices on how we are doing it uh, in the province of Mpumalanga in terms of the three districts. Uh, we must also highlight that as a district uh, municipality of Ethland Zeni, in terms of our category, we are under category, uh, category C2, which uh, means that we are not a, service, uh, a water service authority. Uh, like other district municipalities that you will find in the Eastern Cape, uh, in the KZN. But however, we do enter into agreements with Department of Water and Sanitation in as far as being implementing agents of local municipalities. There are success stories that we can really share in terms of work that we've done in Komazi uh, local municipality uh, uh, on behalf of Department of Water and Sanitation and Komazi local municipality in terms of the bulk infrastructure in the areas around your three copies and Sibange. And we are saying uh, probably uh, in the next uh, financial year uh, around 50,000 of uh, community members will have access to water around that area. Probably uh, in the interest of time, I want to dwell much in terms of uh, the advances, the achievements that we've made in as far as the district development model. As Ethland Zeni District Municipality, we form part of those districts that has approved their, their service delivery models. We have approved ours as, a, as Ethland Zeni in May, uh, in May 2021. Uh, we have done a, a, a study, we've profiled our district. Uh, we have also, through that profiling, uh, came out with an executive summary that was approved by council and submitted to the Minister of Cocta. And I must indicate that in terms of uh, how far we have gone, already we have a, a GDM that has been approved together with the IDP because you cannot divorce these two documents. And what we have gained so far, I must indicate that a lot of investment have been uh, attracted by or through the district development model because we have the private sector participating uh, in the district council. We have also established work streams in line with the six pillars of the district development model. These work streams are being shared by uh, the general managers at the political level. They are being shared by the MMCs that gradually reports to the district council where we have a champion at the national level deployed in our space at the provincial level, we also have a provincial champion at the district being chaired by the executive mayor. In terms of uh, uh, the private sector also contributing into our space, we must make mention the fact that already we've got Catholic projects, a number of Catholic projects uh, having a, a, a reasonable budget to carry forward the work 
of uh, those projects that we are implementing in our spaces. Just to mention a few, you have your Inkosi city in your city of Mbombela, where already there is a plan in place in terms of uh, EIAs that have been uh, conducted in terms of the study. Uh, what would be a challenge thereof, but one is appreciating the fact that in terms of the private sector investment, we have drawn interest in as far as uh, building a dam that would address the water issues. That is what is stalling the process in, in, in as far as the Nkosi city development is concerned. And we are saying many women in terms of your MMEs are going to benefit in terms of the agricultural produce that will go through the value chain in terms of that project. We also have uh, Babaton Mines that we've partnered with uh, in terms of your con uh, creek concession, uh, concession area, also under the city of Mbombela. We are looking at uh, partnering, as, as I've indicated, we've partnered with them so that we build a dam to really assist us in terms of addressing those challenges around water in your Umshinde, as Umshinde was once declared as being hit by drought. So we, we, we really appreciate that through the district development model, we have a high appetite of invest, uh, investors wanting to come to our space and help us carry out uh, the issue of service delivery. Probably also to mention the question of the SEZ that we have around uh, Nkomazi, it's at an advanced stage. We are looking at probably creating uh, many job opportunities uh, through the SEZ project. Uh, I've indicated uh, Uguti Nkomazi is a rural uh, local municipality bordering your Kingdom of Swaziland as well as uh, your Mozambique. So through the SEZ and the private investments that we'll have in that area, we want to believe it will really uh, boost the economy of Nkomazi uh, so that they are able to provide uh, services in a sustainable manner. So I see, uh, Comrade <laughs> Mel, you, you, are, you, <laughs> you are looking at me. There's so, so much to share around the district development model. Uh, in terms of the one plan, putting everything under, uh, in one basket, because as a district of Etanzani, we are just managing a total budget of 200 million. But when we put all resources together, the budget through the district development model will be roughly above 200 billion that we'll be managing. That would be translated into job opportunities, skills development, so that uh, probably our communities, as we are saying, building better communities together. So we are moving with communities. We have your, 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 your stakeholders that are sitting in the district council, uh, civil organizations, the, your academia, we have MOUs with your Mpumalanga University. There is also assisting our professionals already as Eslan Zen, we have uh, adopted or absorbed hundreds and placed them in, 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 your, in your farms around the uh, Eslan Zeni. We've also placed them in the municipality to assist us around the question of uh, municipal health. So really we are saying together we are going to build better communities working with our communities. Thank you very much, Comrade Neb. Thank you very, very much. No, it's fine. It, it's, um, thank you very, very much, uh, Mayor Sidel. It, it broke my heart to have to write you those notes and give you the looks because uh, I think your passion and commitment uh, comes through very, very clearly and that, that leadership, which is what is the ANC through the processes of candidate selection, of interviewing mayors through the pledge, we seek to strengthen comes through very, very strongly, and it's reflective in the performance of your municipality. Thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to invite to the podium Mayor Mzwandile Masina, Mayor of the city of Ekuruleni. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Andres. Let me take this opportunity to greet uh, our DSG, Comrade Jesse Duarte, greet members of the National Executive Committee that are here, Comrade Ned Kekan, Comrade Figile Mbalula, Comrade Pule Mabe, and uh, fellow mayors who are here, members of the media. Thank you very much. Uh, I know we don't have much time. We'll try and crystallize the story. 
uh, of the city of Egorland within the context of what uh, uh, Comrade Ngadimeng has just um, alluded to. As you know, that um, post the transitional period uh, in 2000, we, we formed the metro uh, consisting of uh, the nine former towns, all those Pinoni, Boxback, uh, Jemistin. Uh, there were nine towns and there were two administration, the former Kayalami and the Eastern Houting Services. Um, during that time, the mayor was uh, Comrade uh, Bavu Mile Vilagazu stayed just for a year. And the issue there was to address uh, the question of separate development. And the focus of that administration was really to look into the structure of government that was uh, uh, to be formed at that particular point in time. The, the subsequent 2001 to 2008, Comrade uh, Dumangosi, uh, he really was to consolidate the issues of administration. As you know, that all those towns, they had their own structures, was to consolidate the, the institutional base and make sure that it's, uh, in, uh, it's consistent with how the metro has been formed in that particular period. And uh, he was followed by Comrade Ndombi Mihwe, 2008 to 2010, uh, basically to try and finalize that particular work. But uh, the, the essence of the metro really began during the time of Comrade Mondli Kungubele, uh, 2010 to 2016, where long-term strategies were put in place uh, for government, including the GDS 2025, later 2055, uh, as well as uh, some of the, you know, uh, projects that were critical, uh, including the Eretropolis master plan conceptualization. At that point, uh, we were really dealing with policy space uh, in government to try and make sure that things um, uh, are able to, to be done. And uh, I'm sure you'll notice that in all these uh, instances, uh, Comrade DSG, uh, we've not we've had a culture of not finishing terms uh, of office, and uh, there's not been consistency in terms of leadership throughout this particular period. The, the period of 2016 to, to date, uh, I think that's where we began to uh, harvest the fruits of the amalgamation institutional setup as well as the long-term planning. Ours was then to implement the ANC policy at that particular point in time. And I must say that we have been able to, to over time, to deal with quite a number of issues. Firstly, the issue I want to touch on is the issue of governance. Uh, that um, uh, throughout this period of 2016 to, uh, to uh, um, 2021, we, we have had uh, uh, good audit outcomes, uh, the last one being the clean audit. And uh, throughout the, the, the five years of, the, of period, we've not experienced any unauthorized, irregular, and wasteful expenditure, which is an indication that our internal control systems have been strong. And this is attributed to the capacity that we're able to build you know, for instance, in the finance department, because we are dealing with almost 60 billion rent budget, we have not less than 11 uh, uh, qualified chartered accountants. All departments throughout are led by uh, a specialist. Uh, you know, if it's water, the, the person in charge of the department uh, is a water engineer, so is electricity, so is roads, and so on and so on. So, so we've made sure that we professionalize our public service with, with regard to issues of that. But uh, quite more Interestingly, that uh, if you look at 2,000 uh, states vis-a-vis 2021 states with regard to water, we're sitting at about almost 40 percent of provision. We are now sitting at about 96 percent provision, and the reason why it's not 100 percent, there are informal settlements that are located in the privately owned land, so we're making a mechanism to make sure that we can have supply of that. The electricity. Uh, almost the same, just above above 90 percent is the same story. So as the sanitation, as well as uh, uh, the issues of waste collection. So I must say that because the population has uh, doubled at the time of forming the metro in 2000, the population was just below 2,000. Uh, I mean, two two million. Uh, the population now sits at just over four million. So the population is, uh, is, has has doubled. So our capacity to deal with these things require or necessitate us to be able to do this kind of work. What are we doing uh, in terms of ensuring that the, our infrastructure can cope in the long term? Uh, in the water space, for instance, uh, we inherited DSG about uh, 29 reservoirs, a uh, combination of what apartheid um, uh, you know, left as a legacy. In five years, we have matched that capacity. We've built additional 29 reservoirs at a cost of about 1.2 billion we are doing the same with the uh, uh, energy uh, infrastructure because it was 
link, it was based on those small door pieces. So we're integrating the electricity network so that we can be able to, so as water network, so that we're able to ensure that the metro runs seamlessly, including issues of sewer throughout the city. I must say that one of the main challenges that we are facing as Egoru Lane is that the city is 52% dolomatic, so it's, it makes it difficult for our sewer network to hold. So we have uh, made some appeals to the national uh, government uh, to help us deal with issues of, um, uh, of, the, of the sinkholes so that we can sustain our, our, our network on the ground. Um, the issue of human settlement uh, has been one of the major uh, uh, programs that we have been rolling out. Uh, in five years, almost uh, 61,000 houses have been built, and uh, we have built an infrastructure for all our mega projects that can give us about, that, that, that can give us about two, 220,000 uh, 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 house, housing units uh, uh, in the main. So the story goes uh, uh, in as far as the issues of land, uh, the issues of um, health, you know, We've got 93 clinics, we've built about 10 in our term of office, and uh, we, we now have about eight clinics that are open for 24 hours. As we, as we move towards building the university, as a process, uh, you know, we've paid about 500 million to educate about 10,000 young people in the city uh, to show our, to demonstrate, even though uh, education is not the, 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 the responsibility of local government, to show our commitment that uh, we don't want to lead people who have no future. So those are the things that we have been able to do over this particular period of time. I could go on to issues of crime, land, but maybe I could, with the last minute that is remaining, Comrade Andres, touch on the issue of land that, um, you know, we found almost 300 uh, farmland that were lying fallow. So we have begun the process of giving those pieces of land to our people. The land that is owned by municipality where the informal settlement we are making them, we are putting services so that we can make those land available and then we've got also strategic land parcels that we've made available to make sure that we can share those uh, with the majority of our people. So this has been the story uh, of development within this particular city. What is next as the ANC is looking uh, uh, towards its victory in the, in the city, we want to ensure that we can consolidate our infrastructure and focus more on, 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 on ensuring that um, uh, we, man we maintain uh, all the, 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 the infrastructure to be able to discharge these services uh, to our people. So I would like to end there in respect of time, and I'm sure as we engage, we'll be able to touch to other issues. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you very, very much, uh, Comrade uh, Masina. You not only lead an Eritropolis, uh, but clearly you and your municipality are flying. Thank you very, very much for that. Could I then uh, ask Mayor Nomvui Mposelwa from Senko Municipality to come and give us a perspective on local municipalities? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Greetings to you, Comrade Nell. Greetings to the DSG, Comrade JC, DM of Copta, Comrade Tembi, my fellow mayors of local government, NEC members, media houses present, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. A small rural municipality, but able to practice good governance. This is Sinku local municipality in the Eastern Cape. Sinku is not different from other municipalities in terms of backlogs because of inequalities created by the apartheid system, where rural areas were neglected with challenges of aging infrastructure, lack of resources, and geographical factors. In 2020, the impact of COVID-19 on service delivery has certainly been felt. It hampered our municipality a great deal, DSG. As single, we have tried our best to deliver according to the priorities, e.g. access to electricity is about 94.7% 
We've been able to remove, refuse, and manage solid waste in our towns. As a result, in 2018, Singh Uloka Municipality won accolades for the cleanest municipality. We have a maintenance plan for access roads. Although it is not sustainable due to the mountainous and hilly landscape, of course, due, due to the issues of climate change and a single, we are starting to put paving because maintaining gravel is not sustainable. Sinku, I think, is on the right track in terms of implementing ANC's manifesto as we strive to transform the economy through farming. As Sinku is the producer of quality sheep wool, and it is also strong in tourism to create jobs. In addressing youth unemployment through a town cleaning program called Fat Fat, which employs 150 youth annually, funded by the municipality, as you know that we are lacking the resources as Ukombe Tembi alluded to. Young people are also beneficiaries of learnerships and internships funded by National Treasury and working in partnership with South African Youth Movement in CWP programs supported by COCTA. 172 youth graduated in August 2021 to attain various skills that can make them entrepreneurs. Sinku has about 2,000 beneficiaries on EPWP, supported by the Department of Environmental Affairs. Let me go to the key instruments to achieving good governance and, of course, leading to clean audits. As small as we are and lacking the resources, as Sinku, we resolve to appoint competent and qualified managers to drive our administration. We also decided to maintain the appointments beyond the five-year contracts in order to keep the institutional memory, e.g. we've got the municipal manager, same municipal manager, which is the accounting officer, since 2001. You can see that, in, that, that institu institutional memory of that municipal manager. We established all accountability mechanisms for oversight, including quarterly performance reviews, having a functional impact and active audit committee. Our budget processes are informed by the needs of the people through the mayor's and council's public participation programs where the community is engaged about the IDP and new projects for the financial year. The executive committee, departmental standing committees and council meet as per the legislation to monitor expenditure and service delivery as per the IDP. What we have been able to do was to ensure the relationship between administration and political arm was professional and trusting. We avoided interfering with the administrative work. People that have been employed with their qualifications must do their work. We also adopt, adopted policies that supported good governance, such as anti-corruption policy, financial policies, risk management policies, and procurement policies. In all this, the mayor's role is to be the steward of ensuring that council is united and focused on, the, on driving the vision of bringing services to the people. As our motto says, one people, one municipality, one destination. We still have huge backlogs in terms of service delivery. As the municipality, we have been able to use our own investments to attend these backlogs. However, we still need provincial and national governments to support us in this regard. We have been able to ensure that municipality was financially viable through deliberate actions of encouraging people to pay for services we render and our grants are cash backed. Our budget is fully funded and is within the national treasury norm of 35 persons in terms of personnel and operations. We are able and proud to say that we have delivered uh, to our citizens, as these are the Catholic projects, we have connected uh, to various villages and townships e-electricity. Eva has said in the, in the beginning that 94% of our communities have got access to electricity. We have constructed access roads. 
We have constructed pedestrian bridges. We have constructed solid ways. We are starting to move uh, maintaining the gravel. We have started to construct paving in some of the villages and townships. We have installed electricity meters to enhance revenue. We have constructed community walls out of 17 wards. All our wards have community walls, except that our area is so vast, so we need to, to build a have other strategy to, to try to, to, to gather some more areas of convergence for our people. We have installed street lights. We, we are fixing potholes as part of our maintenance plan and also as part of a Back to Basics. I think I'm very grateful, Comrade Tembi and Comrade Nell and DSG, to have this platform and the opportunity to be here and to showcase and reflect on how are we doing as Sinkoloka municipality, as a small rural municipality, we are able to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very, very much, uh, Comrade uh, Nomvuyo, um, for really giving us a very clear picture of both the challenges that you face as a local municipality, as a poor rural municipality, but what through leadership and the implementation of the policies, principles, and the values of the ANC you have been able to achieve. Thank you very, very much for that. Next, we have the great pleasure of asking uh, Professor Yaab de Fisser from the Dula Omar Institute at the University of Western Cape uh, to join us uh, virtually. Professor de Fisser. Are we succeeding in connecting with uh, Professor de Fisser? There we are. Thank you very much. Welcome, Professor de Fisser. We can hear you. All right. Let me, let me then proceed. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Nell, for, for that introduction. And thank you for inviting me to, 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 this, to this event. Um, I really feel very privileged to be able to make a few remarks. Um, and I want to acknowledge everyone present, including the Deputy Minister, the Honourable Mayors, um, the Chief Office Bearers of the ANC, and everyone present. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity. So I, I'm here representing the, the Dalla Omar Institute, you know, formerly known as the Community Law Centre, and I often feel undeserving standing on the shoulders of the late advocate Dalla Omar. But when I prepared the input for this morning, I had to think of the work that was done by the ANC Constitutional Committee, uh, comprising of people such as Advocate Ala Omar, Alvi Sachs, Bridget Mabandla, the late Dr. Zola Skuiya, Bulalani Luka, and Kader Asmal, who were all residing at the Community Law Center at the time and were designing and building institutions for a democratic South Africa. Um, and it was such important work that was done um, uh, by, by the ANC Constitutional Committee, which at the time operated from, from the University of the Western Cape. Of course, it was followed by the local government negotiating forum, the 1993 Constitution, 1996 Constitution, the White Paper on Local Governments, the demarcation of municipalities, and then the progressive suite of local government legislation that was passed. And indeed, tremendous progress has been registered. Um, with the implementation of the local government framework. And I'm not one uh, to skirt the issues, but I do not join you know, the unnuanced analysis of local government as a bust case and as a failure all across the line. And I echo the words of the Deputy Minister that we need to look at the achievements of local government over the last 20 years, um, certainly in, in that context, because tremendous progress has been, has been made. Of course, there are many systemic issues and the deputy minister have spoken about it you know the funding framework for local government uh, 
enormous impact that electricity restructuring has, or the changes in the electricity uh, provision has on local government, where municipalities are increasingly asked to come in and step in uh, uh, to, to alleviate poverty and are struggling to make ends meet. Uh, and I think the promise that is, that is embedded in the district development model uh, to, to really improve the way local government functions. I, I am not one to say that it's a silver bullet, but I do believe that it will create uh, momentum in, in solving some of the problems that local government is faced with. But I want to focus on one of the remarks in the concept note for this event, which was the challenges in governance in, in municipalities. It's also my area of expertise, so I'm going to focus my comments on, on that aspect. Um, because I do think it is something that, that, that we need to take very seriously, uh, the challenges in municipal governance. You know, there, at the moment, there are about 33 municipalities under administration, and, and the majority of them have been operating with the ANC commanding an outright majority. Um, I'm the author of, a co-author of Local Government Law of South Africa, and I have the duty to read all the case law on local government, uh, all the things that the courts have had to deal with when it comes to, to local government issues. Um, and, and of late, that, that task has been a task of grim reading, where the jurisprudence and, and the issues that come to the courts really sort of indicates that in many parts of the country, uh, municipal governance is not working well. I'll give you two examples in Pokwane, uh, where the council elected two speakers at the same time, operating at the same time, and the courts had to figure out who, who was who was the correctly elected speaker. In Metsimaholo, in 2020, a court case where the MEC or representative of the MEC came to address the meeting, the meeting collapses, uh, a group of councillors organises an alternative meeting somewhere else and appoints officials in that meeting. So, So these are not ordinary governance disputes, this is where, where governance indeed collapses. And the point I want to make is that in, in local governments, the impact of, of governance failure at the council level is, is immediate. It impacts service delivery um, almost immediately. In, in the words of one municipal manager who told me, the trucks literally will not leave the depot the next day. Uh, and this immediately affects service delivery and the dignity of, of residents. So thinking back of, of that ANC Constitutional Committee and the work that it did to build institutions, to establish the rule of law, constitutionalism, that immensely important and proud legacy that really transcends party political interest. This is the South African state uh, that was built by the ANC. And I'm hoping that the barometer also speaks to this and holds ANC councillors uh, accountable and reminds them of the importance of, of respect for the rule of law and for constitutionalism. And I think the pledge really is to be commended and, and I would want to commend the ANC for, for, for starting this initiative of, of, of holding councillors accountable and reminding them of their duty towards, towards the, the, the sacred um, institutions of the state. And it means respect for the institutional arrangements in a municipal council. Uh, the delineation of political and professional administrative roles. And I was delighted to hear the mayor of Senku talking about this, uh, because truly the political administrative interface, as it is euphemistically called, is indeed the Achilles heel of local government in, in many of our municipalities. It's also about respecting the mandate and responsibility of municipalities. They do have their own role to play that must also be respected by other spheres of government. And also respecting institutions such as the Independent Electoral Commission, uh, not just in the weeks to come, but also in the filling of vacancies at local level, which often becomes a site of, of contestation and sometimes illegal behavior on the part of all political parties. Uh, and the, I, the IEC sometimes battles to really maintain the integrity of electoral processes in the filling of vacancies. The work of the Auditor General, another independent institution whose work must be respected uh, by, by councillors and officials alike. And it's also about respecting the responsibility of provincial governments when they oversee and support municipalities. So I think uh, the barometer, I hope, speaks to these issues uh, and reminds councillors within, within this movement uh, of, of their responsibility in that regard. I want to make two final points, and, and I'm probably going to make myself very unpopular, and you may never invite me again, uh, but I want to talk about two aspects as well, which I hope the, the, the barometer speaks to in one way or another, is the ANC in opposition and the ANC in coalition. 
Uh, and I was reminded of a, a poster that is hanging in the, the corridors of the Dalla Omar Institute of Bulalani Luka, uh, who, who, who reminded us of, of that task of the AMC Constitutional Committee when he said, we designed this constitution thinking not just about being in government, but also to serve us when we would end up being in the opposition. And I know it's the worst thing to say a week before the election because the ANC is a ruling party, national government level, eight of the nine provinces and the vast majority of municipalities. And of course it is contesting with the aim of achieving an outright majority. And it will not be satisfied with a 20% representation as rumor has it some other parties would be content with. However, it may just be that the ANC does not achieve outright majorities everywhere. And I hope that the barometer also speaks to that scenario, to those councillors, because they must be champions of their constituencies, of their wards, regardless of who controls the council. And secondly, what does it mean to be in opposition? For example, what lessons can be learned from 15 years of opposition in the city of Cape Town? Because there are ANC voters there that will have expectations. And a similar argument could apply to the context of coalitions. Again, the ANC is not aiming for coalitions. Um, but again, going back to the institutions that were designed and built by those ANC comrades, they include the electoral system. And the possibility of coalitions is baked into our electoral system. Whether we like coalitions or not like coalitions is irrelevant, because depending on the outcome of the elections, the need for coalitions may arise. And the record of those coalitions, also those in which the ANC was a partner, has not always been great. Of course, with some very few notable uh, ex uh, exceptions. So there's no doubt that the political management of coalitions must improve. And I think this calls for a different style of leadership, principled, but also pragmatic and inclusive. So again, my plea is that this be factored into the way the barometer is used and implemented, um, because I think it will benefit uh, the entire country and everywhere where ANC councillors are present. Uh, let me leave it at those comments in the interest of time. Uh, Mr. Program Director, thank you very much for this opportunity and I wish all the uh, candidates and the ANC as an organization all the best in the upcoming elections because so much depends on it. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Professor De Fisser. Um Popular or unpopular, you will never not be invited again because as the ANC, we believe in the values of criticism, of self-criticism, of transparency, of openness, because we believe that we can't solve problems if we don't know about those problems and if we're not honest about those problems. We also know that those problems are deep and fundamental and that they require a whole of society approach. And therefore, we thank you and, wel and welcome your participation um, and continued partnership. Thank you. Now it gives me great pleasure to ask uh, Comrade Joel Nechitenje, uh, Director of MISTRA, um, to take the, the virtual podium. Comrade Joel. Protocol observed. I'll confine my input to some of the lessons uh, that we need to keep in mind as we operationalize the barometer. I wish firstly to underline one issue from historical analysis. This is that if we interrogated progress or lack of it in the years since the establishment of democratic local government, we can clearly see phases in the pace of change. For instance, in the 2000s, there was massive progress in part because of high rates of economic growth that allowed for larger income to municipalities from various sources, creating a virtuous cycle across the political economy. The fundamental issue here is that we cannot divorce local government performance from broader macroeconomic dynamics. Inversely, the pedestrian rates of growth in the past decade, combined with uh, the hollowing out of the state, had a negative impact on municipalities. And of course, we cannot today discuss macro-social indicators 
as if there is no COVID-19 with its devastating impact. The barometer is being launched in the context of an election. And so the focus is on the pledge of political representatives. This includes a commitment to allow the administrators to do their work without undue political interference. And perhaps Salga should consider a pledge for the bureaucrats. Beyond managing finances, efficient administration, and implementing policy, that pledge should include a commitment on their part to resist undue political pressure with a platform where they can report such attempts. Now, some time ago, there was a skills audit conducted at local government level, and this should perhaps be an immediate focus area of the barometer with clear action steps and timelines. As with other monitoring and uh, evaluation instruments, the barometer needs to clearly delineate between technical measurements and people's lived experience. That is between output, outcome, and impact indicators. In the context of current debates about functional and dysfunctional municipalities and what good performance actually means, we know that you can have recurrent clean audits, but at the same time, have sewage running in township streets of the same municipality. Of course, poor audit outcomes are an important bellwether of things going wrong, but we also need to focus on equitable service provision. I will also reflect on another set of critical observations from previous work in government, an issue that has stuck in my mind since the days of the policy unit. This is about national spatial dynamics and their implications for developmental local government. From work that was done then it became clear that spatial developmental convergence does take place, yes, but objectively, its pace is very slow. People will therefore migrate to areas with better economic potential. And the conclusion from this may seem counterintuitive. And this is that more resources should be allocated to the metros and regional towns. The spectacle of poor services in these areas is of course a consequence of lack of capacity to build and maintain infrastructure, but the underlying factor is rapid urbanization and the infrastructure needed to shoulder this demographic change. The same can be said about mushrooming in formal settlements, backyard dwellings, and so on and so forth. Further, across both urban and rural areas, we should assess why national allocations for free basic services are not necessarily reaching all indigent households. As I move towards conclusion, I would want to underline that an effective barometer should critically assess whether the integrated development plans and LEDs are addressing fundamental questions, such as what is the local economic potential, what are the social needs, what are the resources to address those needs and over what time frames? Related to this is the issue of micro-enterprises 
and the registration that was conducted last year in the context of COVID-19. How can we use this to allocate more resources to this sector, most of whose operatives are women? Another critical element element in this kind of exercise should be social compact between government, labor, business, and civil society. For instance, social labor plans in many mining areas have faltered because of lack of cooperation. Social compacting should also entail a deeper understanding of the self-interest of various players. On PRASA and consideration of private partners, for instance, is there a way that we can bring in the taxi industry as part participants or owners, as we did with the BRT system, so as to create a sense of mutual benefit? So, as the ANC rolls out this great idea of a local government barometer, we will need to be creative, also taking into account intergovernmental relations and the district developmental model. Thank you very much. Clear, concise, focused, analytical, and provocative, as always. Thank you very, very much for that. And thank you very, very much to, to all of our panelists, I think, for a very, very uh, incisive, uh, all-round um, engagement with the barometer. It now gives me great pleasure to request the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Comrade Jesse Duarte, to come to the podium after to come to the podium and to give a, a keynote address. Comrade Jesse. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Andres. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let me also greet our esteemed um, panelists who joined us here today. And I think it's been a very, very rich input that uh, can only enhance how we look at the barometer going forward. I think that uh, uh, the Deputy Minister and uh, Professor De Fisser, as well as uh, Comrade Joel, had already looked at what we had to do to restructure local government. I, I won't go into that, but uh, safe to say that we often lose sight of how involved that was and how much money and time that took, and how there is perhaps a hangover of that particular period of our lives into today's governance questions. So what is the barometer is, is really the, the most important question I think that we should answer. When uh, we talked about renewal within the ANC, there are three elements that are vitally important. Is firstly, there must be a demand for transformation of what is to something which is better. Secondly, if you're going to renew uh, a system, you've also got to renew the understanding of the people who will lead that system. And that is quite a courageous and bold thing to have to do because you're dealing with people who are used to a particular system and you come along and you say, no, 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 it's no longer going to be like that. We're not going to interfere in the business of local government uh, administration. What we're in fact going to do is to make sure that our policies are implemented by that administration in a correct and effective way. And also enhancing the leadership capacity in the process of renewal, making sure people understand 
what it is that they are going to lead. So the barometer is in fact a tool for us to measure the capacity of a councillor at a local government level to do the job, to put it bluntly and and, and I'm not going to use sophisticated language, but that is what this barometer seeks to do. We also have, uh, we have empathy and we understand uh, that COVID-19 has had a massive impact on, um, on our, in our recent history and exacerbated the fault lines and existing hardships in our society. You can't deny that. You know, we, we as, a, as a nation, we suddenly had to face what we thought we had years and years and years of dealing with. We had to understand and say, here's a pandemic which is showing us very clearly that unless we deal with development of housing that is adequate for our people, pandemics are going to kill many, many more people when they live in infer infirm uh, and on top of one another in informal settlements, this is a problem. So then what must you do? We cannot waste a day. We need to deal with the informal settlements question now. But how do you deal with that? When in fact people are moving, as Tembi and Comrade Joel says, they move from areas where there's no uh, hope of having a job to metros because they believe that that's where uh, jobs are in the cities. Now when we get then to the city, who is it that will deal with this problem? And the concept of agility comes into play here. Do we have people who are leading us at local government level with the agility to understand that you must be able to move in a direction that services the people very directly? And for that you need counselors who are going to understand the very fundamental problems that are faced in every ward. Um, I'll, I'll digress for a second and just say that the area of Oatswaran is my favorite area to, to explain. It was one of the areas we spent a lot of time on examining, understanding, because we met this interface of politics and non-delivery at its very core. Here you have a municipality who spends 30% on salaries. That is huge. And the question is why? The why part is because it is a coalition and the coalition sits down and says, we are going to uh, give the ANC X number of people to work in the municipality. The DA will get X number of people, um, the PA will get X number of people, and the uh, concerned a group will get X number of people. So they make an agreement, each political party, how many people will work in that municipality. And that does not mean that you have competent people working in that municipality. That simply means that you have divided the, the municipality up into a job creation enterprise. So we need to say very directly that the renewal part of what we want with local government has as many elements in it. We started by having a new process for selecting our ward councillors. That process was not um, a very popular process. I, I think we must say that here. It was tough because all of a sudden you were challenging the core basis of where decisions are made in the ANC and that is in the branch of the ANC and so it should be. But we said that the branch of the ANC has to have the perspective of being a leader of society and must be able to take society into confidence and allow the people in the ward to choose their own councillors. Yes, you may select three people that you want from the ANC, but if the community says no to any or all of those three, you're going to have to live with it. Because a councillor is a representative of the people in a broad community. It's not a representative of the membership of the ANC. Oh, Andres is saying, please can you remove your mask? Well, I was scared to do that because, uh, you know, then there's a, a message on the TV that says um, people are there without masks and it's not our fault. 
So I didn't want it to be anybody's fault. Okay, so the reality then is that you cho the community chooses a ward councillor. What does that imply and why, why an oath for that ward councillor? That ward councillor's oath is saying, I will ensure that services to my area are going to be provided. But what does that mean? It means a person with the capability of fighting in the council for the road in an award that has not been repaired, for fighting for the water in, the, in an area I was in yesterday where there's an area where there hasn't been water for a few weeks now. But, uh, and the answer is logical but unacceptable. The logic of the answer is that we get our water from boreholes. And when there's no electricity, then the pumps don't work. Um, yeah, that, that is obviously logical. But it's a problem. What is the solution to that? Has that councillor sat down? Have they called ESCOM? Those were the hundreds of questions I was asking, and I thought the poor councillor was going to just say, go away, go, go far, far away, and never come back here. But the issue is, it is the council who must fight for the people in the council. It is not the executive who on their own make those heady decisions about what development comes to that council. It is the councillor and the IDPs that determine what would be the biggest priorities in a council. So we need good people to do that, and we need competence. So what is competence? We're not saying that councillors must have 10 degrees. A degree is, of course, a very useful thing to have, but must have the experience to carry forward what the community needs in service delivery. And secondly, must have the courage to stand up very firmly and fight for the rights of that community. So the oath is an important element, but the oath also goes with agility. That councillor must also be able to understand that the resources have to be shared in a very big area. And so must have the honesty and the integrity to go back to the community and explain, our road will only come in three years' time. It's not going to happen tomorrow. And secondly, must not be the representative of a business entity who wants to build that road, but must also understand that anybody in the community with the competence is able to compete for that role. So the, the barometer, and as, as uh, Joan Echitense says, there's a number of elements in this barometer, and I think it will grow as we go along, but we have already done so much work. We met uh, with all the um, uh, ANC members responsible for energy, and I'm putting it that way. They are elected, yes, but they are also ANC members. Our critical question was, how do we resolve the ESCOM problem? And the answer that we got was clear. If you look at Soweto, where you have over 2,000 um, uh, 2, uh, uh, units that supply electricity, and of those, some 109 uh, a little uh, substations were not functional. Now they are down to 33. That means work has been done. And the point is that we don't recognize that, that work has been done. Why? Because where those 33 uh, little substations have not yet been fixed, people don't have electricity and they're not ready to hear anything more. But on top of that is the huge debt burden that all the municipalities have towards ESCOM, where they're not able to collect enough money to pay for that electricity. So what do we need? We also need mayors, and that's the next point I'd like to make. We're going to be interviewing people who will be the next group of mayors where ANC wins um, a municipality. And why are we going to interview? Is to look at the competence and experience of a person who can manage and be in an executive authority position that understands what the job is. It's a whole range of issues. It is also the ability to call a director 
or call the municipal manager and say the waste that is being dumped in opposite people's houses is causing disease, when will that be fixed? It is knowing that there's a broken pipe, but not waiting for three years to fix that pipe. It's finding a way to fix that pipe out of the budget that you have. Because if you don't fix that pipe, and it goes on for another three years, all you're doing is you you're actually denying people a right to access to a particular service. And it is making those connections. So we're looking for seriously experienced people, and we're also looking for people with some smarts in finance and in executive management. I also want to say that um, our commitment is, is renewal and revitalization of our society. And, our, and as this, we've, we've begun by looking at a different way of selecting people. But, you know, I do want to say, obviously, that um, everybody will be interviewed and subjected to background checks and signed performance agreements against which they will be held accountable. And that is why we need this barometer. We'll meet every three months, and we will make sure that we measure people according to what they had offered to deliver. And where does that come from? It will come from when the municipalities, um, when, when you publish your next budget, we're going to look at your budget and say, okay, so how are we going to measure this mayor against that budget? How did she perform? You know, uh, and so on. And Tembi will remember when I did uh, a session with her and I said, when will you take this uh, city into a metro? Her eyes are big by nature, but they went very big. <laughs> and she says, she said, where will we get the resources from? The point is that you do not attract investment if you cannot provide reliable water services and reliable electricity services and good roads for the product to reach its market. Three things. Um, and also a good relationship with your labor force in the municipality is vitally important. We also need people who are going to be able to understand that you must respect the labor laws as well. And you can't just say, well, you know, Samu is part of COSATU, we allies, Samu people must just uh, uh, fall in line. We don't fall in line. There are labor laws. So what we're really working towards is formality. Formality in terms of acceptance of the laws that govern local government, uh, at one level, but also integrity at the level of being an ANC cadre that must perform in a particular way. Without the ANC cadre itself becoming a problem and simply a proxy for um, gangs or, uh, or whatever it is that that might be coming our way. I wanted to say that mm -hmm. We are cognizant uh, that incidences of criminal activities and cor uh, corruption practices are too prevalent in our society. And our, our manifesto spells out zero tolerance to those iniquities. So what we're doing now, we actually monitor what is still outstanding in municipalities in terms of pending cases that must be dealt with in, uh, uh, for 2021. So we now know we've got to keep our eye on, uh, on, on, on those particular areas and make sure that the same m problem does ne never reoccurs, never recurs uh, where it might have uh, recurred before. Um, uh, whatever it is that, that that might have caused a criminal activity to take place on. What I would like to say to you is that please accept and understand that we will not step away from our commitment to transforming our society in totality. And that means that we are, the, the spatial development um, difficulties that we have, where you still have uh, the way in which, where people veer to and where they spend their money to, you then see that ANC led, uh, we lead the poorest of the poor and we service the poorest of the poor. We are not servicing the wealthy, well healed communities in our society. That must change. That must change. 
so that what can happen is that we can all develop at a particular rate and not have to develop at the two separate rates that we are at the moment. We have a Sandton city, beautiful, very smart and so on. All, everything is well looked after and the inner city of Johannesburg continues to degrade and degrade because there simply is no money to, up, to, have it, uh, to keep it up and keep it going. Um, I think that what, where we are now is to say to you and to say to ourselves, we should not write off what we've achieved so easily. We've done a lot of good work. In the 33 municipalities where things have gone wrong, we must focus and concentrate on fixing those things. But in the areas where we've done well, like Ekuruleni, like Sangu, like where you come from, let's do better than where we come from. It cannot just be, we must never be uh, happy with mediocrity or just enough. Just enough is not enough. We must have excellent local municipalities so that if we have excellent local municipalities, our people's lives will begin to change for the better. Uh, we, we do want to attract uh, good investment into our country, but we also want to see a concomitant change in the upstreaming of everything that happens. Local economies must be given a chance to exist. And they're only going to be able to exist if the local authority is doing a good job and is able to, yesterday I was asked in this community where I was, uh, Comrade Phoebe, can we please have a mall? And I immediately said, no, you know what? Malls take money out of your community. Why don't you have local grocer, butcher, baker, etc., and shop from them? Uh, let's not go for the, what, it doesn't help a community to have a big mall. All it is is a, is a short-term convenience, but long-term, it gives you nothing back. Uh, well, it gives a, a tax to the national fiscus, but not to the local economy. So what we want to do with this barometer is that we want to see that we push hard for well-managed local uh, governance, that we push hard for excellent service delivery, not just Havuana service delivery, it must be the best. That we push hard for, um, that we take council business very seriously and we really deepen a culture of accountability to the people. If you're a councillor, your first line of accountability is to the people who elected you to be a councillor. And secondly, you must please adhere to the principles and values of the African National Congress. If you are an ANC councillor, you can't avoid the ANC. And we will insist that you do so. Um, so we can do more and we should have done more. We know that. The ANC remains committed to do more and better in the period ahead. And we believe that we have the talent and the commitment of people in the ANC who are able to rise to that level. And we will make sure that they do. We look forward to ongoing engagements with regard to local government as our constitutional democracy continues to mature. And we hope to see all of you again in three months' time when we report to you on how we have been able to bring back reports from the barometer itself. Thank you very much, uh, Chair of the, of the, of the session. And th thank you very, very much, uh, Deputy Secretary General, for, I think, very, very clearly linking the overall work of the ANC in terms of renewing itself and its approach to local government through the selection of candidates, through the selection of mayors, through putting in place mechanisms of accountability, linking all of those steps to this local government barometer. Ladies and gentlemen, we now open for a question and, and answer session, um, both for those present here as well as uh, those on, online.
I will recognize you if you could quickly, briefly state your name and your publication and uh, pose your uh, question, which we will field to members of the panel here and online. I have one, two, three. My apologies, I cannot recognize you behind your masks. <laughs> okay. I think there is a there is a roving there is a roving mic. I must have tried both. Okay, the last the last doctor left town because their sonar machine burnt out a third time after an electricity um, surge because the municipality was managing electricity badly. So, so that's businesses that have left town and and that won't come back very easily, very quickly. And meanwhile, people who work at those businesses don't have jobs. How do you reverse that kind of decline that comes from poor government? It's in the Twaing municipality, and we all know what happened there a few weeks ago with, with the dissolution. And my second question is, um, we've seen infighting in the ANC for positions, um, uh, what do you call it, ward positions. And we've seen the ANC has set up a schedule for by-elections following these elections to fix those problems. So we have these, this barometer and we have these nice plans, but how long will it take to, for the ANC to get these plans in place if we're going to have by-elections? And it seems like we might have a longer election season that we bar than we're bargaining for. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> the governing party had, I think, um, performance agreements with the ministers that took a really long time to get to the point where they signed off. What guarantee do we have that in three months' time what you're looking for from the councillors would have been done, on the part of the ANC, that is? Um, they might have been forced to wait on the party. So what guarantee do you have that you'll do what you're saying you'll do to make sure they're able to be at least held up to that parameter, measured to that parameter? The second question is around coalitions. Um, I think it was Professor Fissa who said, who said it's, it's something that you must have. It's a conversation that must be had. On the panel there, you've got a mayor who wrote a book about coalitions. What is the conversation that the NC is having? What are you looking for? And what are your no-go areas? Um, has the NC had the conversation about what it's willing to do and what it's not willing to do come the end of the week? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Barry Bateman from ENCA. Um, there has been a barometer that has been used by the public for since the start of uh, our democracy, and that is the Auditor General report. It gives us a good indication of how uh, municipalities are functioning. And up until even just this year, uh, it's, it's something we've seen year after year is that the, there are findings of municipalities that are filled with incompetent people. Uh, there's a dearth of skills. Um, and when there are recommendations made, they are simply not adhered to. Now, the ANC has developed its own barometer. It's going to assess this based partly, you say, on the AG report and come up with a plan. Um, this is coming, you, you announcing this a week before an election. Uh, why is anybody to believe that anything's going to change? And you're actually going to act on the people in these municipalities to make a change, considering when a, 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 an institution created by the, the uh, Constitution, like the AG, is simply ignored. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions here at the, the Media Center? Otherwise, if we could ask whether there are quest, questions uh, online. 
No questions, right? <coughs> then I would like uh, to give an opportunity to, to our panelists uh, to, to respond. Um, I think maybe if uh, Deputy Minister Nkadi Meng could take uh, Karine Duplessis's first question on good governance and the decline of, 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 of cities. I think all, if not most, of the other questions, uh, DSG, I think uh, <laughs> they are uh, <laughs> um, destined for, 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 they have one destination and one destination only. Let me start with uh, Deputy Minister Nkadimeng and then end with uh, DSG. I think I think better here for the. Oh, for the yeah. other media. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe a sanitizer. Thank you. That will help. Uh, Karen, yes, there's a regression, but when we started the term in 2016, we had 42 municipalities under administration. We are closing the term at 33. And administration has to be categorized into three areas. And I did touch on this point, that one is this dysfunctionality out of wastage of, of, of resources. And Comrade JC has spoken to them and the parameters that we have gone at length in terms of dealing with them. The second and the stubborn part leads to the work that we have already begun to do as an organization to review the parameters and the walls of municipalities because it leads us to dysfunctional, non-viable municipalities. I've been in, in Limpopo. I'll make an example of at least that I could be able to comprehend with speed in space. Collins Chawani Municipality. It's situated between Guiani Malamolele and Mozambique. There are four streets there. You have a developmental plan which talks about economic and the tourism because of the location of the space, not outside communities which can contribute because they've got even beyond the national average of unemployment because of the location of the municipality. Sengu is the same situation here. Now the municipality could now be called non-viable because as part of the plans for today, it is still to unlock that opportunity which is based on the four 40 plans that we have spoken about in the district development plan. It then suggests that you need to begin to reverse the financially unviable municipalities by unlocking the economic development of those areas to make them financially sustainable. And that's the huge chunk of the 33 that we are remaining in. Then you have dysfunctionality which comes, for example, out of Tsuaying, which needs the legislations to deal with. And there are two coupled legislations which have been implemented uh, thoroughly. I'm not sure, Karen, if you have seen that the uh, NCOP set with its chair uh, on committees, uh, 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 a member of parliament uh, who's chairing that committee, uh, China Dodov, and uh, 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 dissolved to a municipality just some two weeks or so ago. And that's what the legislation empowers government to do. And we are busy, we have got the plans of all the 33 from non-viable financially to the administrative issues or even political instability because the essence of Tsuaying, for example, is in the main, the political instability, which then led into administrative dysfunctionalities. And the second phase is what uh, 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 Mayor Jester touched a little bit about, that they've already received circulars as mayors of what are the expectations on the first day of cancer. And our target as the African National Congress, which unfortunately becomes my job, is to ensure that in the first 30 days, all those cancer are set. The legislation gives us 40 days to ensure that we have established cancer. It gives a further extension of 120 days. Then we will be able to say to you, the first parameter needs to be talking about the establishment of councils, which is a major function, orientation, a five-day plan, package, uh, a legislation packed. We are waiting for this 9,000 odd councillors that will be coming to us as a, a government on the 4th, 5th of, of uh, November when the IEC announced the election. So that's the part. But 
I'm not undermining the part that 33, it is a number, but I'm saying we're having 257 municipalities. So over 200 municipalities are functioning in a way that they are able to provide their services. And I did say, even where we're struggling, we're still able, that's why you still pay for free basic services. It may not be paying it to the 100% that is expected to be dealt with. Uh, Comrade Jesse deals with infighting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the audit uh, outcomes, um, uh, Jerry, uh, uh, the report, I've articulated it a little bit, doing a comparison of what we were able to submit in 2000 and what we are left with at the 14% now. I did indicate as well, it's not only two elections. It's just that possibly Mayor Masina has not had an, 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 an opportunity to touch on that because of time. Together with the Auditor General, key performance areas for audit and support in municipalities has been developed and piloted in the eight metros. So when we say he has a clean audit, it just does not come from the ordinary audit that we used to do at local municipalities, but it is a performance indication audit as well, which has been adopted by the AG. In this uh, next financial year, we then roll out to the 105 local municipalities to ensure. So this is not necessarily, uh, uh, in, in most instances, an election uh, uh, draw card. We have also been able, through the skills audit, and uh, uh, Mistra spoke about the because they were fundamental in assisting local government as a sphere in dealing with the 257 municipalities and assessing its skills audit. And then the issue now is more about the areas where you need to be able to equip municipalities which can attract. Mayor Masina said, he said uh, in their finance division, they've got 11 chartered accountants. I'm sure saying who is not even having one. Because they can pay for 11 chartered accountants. He, she has to find means on how to equip. So in some instances, there's a skill gap. In some instances, there are mismatch. But the skills audit deals with all of that. And we will periodically uh, be reporting. But there's also an essence of, and an emphasis from the African National, point of, the African National Congress point of view of professionalizing of the sphere, not only at an administrative level, but also at a political level. Thank you very much. Yes, Chief. Uh, let, let me start by saying, you know, where we are now on the ESCOM issue, we're demanding an answer. We want to know what is going on in ESCOM. Why is it that we can't get, you know, we're getting uh, answers that relate to this area. That's what we're doing. We're fixing these transformers. But what's going on there? Why is this thing not able to be resolved? And so that's where we are now. Clear, unequivocal, straightforward answer from Minister Gordon and from uh, the CEO. Um, we can't go on like this. We get every day, we now have a, a, a message that says there will be load shedding from 12 today, um, and it sounds like it's almost, in, it's never going to end. Now, you can't put out a statement like that and not give us a reason why. You know, we, we also think as a society, and uh, we have lives to live, and businesses to run, and children to feed, and, and, and all manner of things. So uh, it's unacceptable. Um, so our people need a proper answer from uh, Meneer de Reiter as well as from the, from the minister. Now, on the infighting and the skepticism, I understand that. But I can assure you, already our councillors have their contract that they must sign with the ANC. Everybody got it. They will sign it when they win. So they already know what they in for and what they have to report on, okay? Um, over 9,000 ANC councillors, they'll sign that on, I think when the results come on, on the fifth, on the third, uh, the, the deadline was on the third. Well, if the results are already out, we'll have to wait a day, uh, Comrade Phoebe. We also sent out a circular to tell municipalities that we expect them to, be, uh, to have concluded the main business 
of the mayoral uh, election by the 18th. So that's why we are, will complete our mayoral interviews on the 13th and we will go to the NEC over that weekend to finalize, 13, 14, and 15. So I just want to say the atmosphere within the ANC right now is, is not just talking strong, like as if we talk strong because we have nothing better to do. We talk strong because we've planned it. And we've got, and our plan is clear. And that plan will be followed to the letter, I can assure you of that. And where councillors don't sign that contract, they will have to come out of that council. Not going to accept anybody saying, I'm not signing this thing. They will sign it. It is, it is compulsory to do that. What happens when people don't implement the findings of the AG? That is part of what the barometer will be dealing with, is to look at all the outstanding um, uh, AG remarks in various municipalities and to ask for answers as to how that will be resolved and time frame by when. So it's not just how are you going to resolve it, comrade, and we'll see you in three years' time. It can't be right and it won't be done like that. Um, I, I have a discomfort with generalizing that everybody in local uh, uh, government is incompetent people. There is incompetence, but there's also excellence. And we mustn't just um, uh, say that everybody's incompetent. What we will avoid is to have people who are mayors and in the mako who are not going to be able to do the job. That's what our responsibility is, is to make sure that the executive authority is capable of doing the job of implementing the policies and the manifesto of the ANC and making sure that it does happen. And that's why we have the, uh, uh, the barometer. And the barometer is in fact a way for us to, uh, it's a measurement to make sure that we ourselves don't fall asleep at the wheel, and that every three months we do get ourselves out there to go and test um, what's going on on the ground. That's important. Um, and, and that, is, uh, you know, that is, is, is what we need to do. We have to do what we must do. We must do. On coalitions, we haven't got as far as discussing uh, who we want to go into coalitions with. What we will do over the weekend is to discuss principles. There will be organizations that have absolutely no similarities to the ANC and where our goals are completely divergent. We, we obviously would not consider them as a top priority on our, if we have to go into coalitions. So um, we haven't even, the committee's been put together but they've not met uh, because we said let's wait for the elections and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it next week. Um, yeah, it, it normally takes like a day or two uh, to get that in, in place. And we would like to have all of that in place by the 5th of, of, um, no, of November. It's going to be a tight week. All I can tell you is that you don't have to take, take anything for granted right now. But believe us, you can call us, as, as uh, Tembi has said, after the first 180 days, we will have some answers. Um, on the question of the infighting and, and the, how long it will take, you see, again, I may have a very great discomfort with uh, Karin's question, as if, in general, 4,860 councillors are fighting for positions. That's absolutely not the truth, okay? What we're dealing with is about 250 um, disputes that we have to resolve, uh, where people are claiming, and I use the word claiming at this point, that community meetings were not held. Or they were number one on the community meeting list and number two uh, was registered or uh, some such things. And uh, the team led by Khalima Mutlanti will be sitting, uh, they have a, uh, uh, they've already sent out their roster, all the uh, regions have it, and they start their work on the, they say they start their work on, on the 1st of November. My question was, well, you have to wait a bit to see what happens, but more likely on the 5th of November, 
they'll start sitting to listen to those uh, outstanding disputes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DSG. I trust that that deals with all of the questions that were asked. And uh, we thank you very, very much for uh, your participation as, as, as the media. Again, a very, very important partner in this uh, process of uh, renewal and the attainment of the objectives uh, set out in our manifesto. Thank you very much. It then gives me great, 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 great pleasure to call upon the stage uh, Comrade Fikile Mbalula, the ANC Head of Elections, to uh, come and uh, do uh, a closing remark. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press and the South Africans at large and the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC and the Acting Secretary General of the African National Congress and all comrades who did take part in this uh, important occasion. The launch of the ANC's uh, local barometer takes place against the backdrop of the 104th anniversary of the birth of the longest serving president of the African National Congress, O.R. Tambo. As we continue to draw inspiration from the leadership uh, of this giant of our revolution, we must spare no effort in delivering the kind of society that we sacrificed his life uh, for. His words continue to inspire our forward momentum when he said the fight for freedom must go on until it is won. Until our country is free and happy and peaceful as part of community of men, we cannot rest. That is why the ANC cannot defend mediocrity. I cannot defend mediocrity in ESCOM, in Prasa, everywhere. ANC can't defend that. ANC expect the best. Our people expect the best from the ANC. As we go door to door and talking to our people, facing them on the ground and talking to them, they communicate the message, we will vote the ANC. We will vote the ANC. Please do better. Hence our slogan, building communities uh, together. And this is the message that resonates with our people. Every volunteer, every leader, every cadre on the ground is faced by this popular sentiment. And you ask yourself a question, why do people vote for the African National Congress? It's because it's their vehicle, it's their organization, and they believe in the NC and they communicate this message unequivocally. The barometer we are launching today is another tangible step towards the emancipation of the people from the bondages of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. It is a direct response to our own self-assessment of how we have fared in our commitment to deliver a local government system that is truly responsive to the needs of all South Africans. We have listened to the voices of the rank and file who demand of us to do better in addressing bread and butter issues. We have taken the war against corruption and malfeasance to those who use their positions of authority as public representatives. We have traversed the length and breadth of our country genuinely engaging with the people and took time to listen to them. Others shared their pain of living in squalor, while some of our municipalities failed to deliver services. The President, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa, and all ANC officials and the National Executive were on the campaign trail and are still on the campaign trail, where they interacted with citizens and paid serious attention to the issues they raised. The barometer not only gives context to the challenges of addressing infrastructure backlogs, transforming apartheid spatial planning, and rapid urbanization. It also serves as an important instrument 
to measure the pulse of our local government system and an early warning system that will enable timely intervention where we are not fulfilling our commitments. We have been to every community. We have listened attentively and heard the people. Our commitment to resolve their problems, do better in government municipalities and build better communities is a firm commitment and that is backed by tangible actions. It's a compact between the ANC and uh, our people. While the councillor candidate selection process may not have been without its challenges, but we pride ourselves that none of our candidates have criminal matters pending before the courts. Where this happens, we will not hesitate to implement the step aside a rule. Those who aspire to be mayors in our metros will be subjected to a rigorous interview process. With only four days remaining to election day, we call upon South Africans to come out in their numbers to vote for the ANC so we can deliver better communities. On Friday, the 29th, October 2021, we will be hosting the main Siangoba rally uh, in Mufulo Park in Soweto. All other metros and big cities in different provinces will be linked via satellite broadcast. The satellite broadcast will be as follows. Johannesburg will be Tokoza Park, will be addressed by the President of the African National Congress. There will be a build-up to Tokoza Park, Tswani Metro, Stanza Bupape, Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, Kwanobuche, Buffalo City Metro, Absa Stadium, Mangaung Metro Indoor Sports Center, next to Dr. Mulemela Stadium, Pulugwani, Sishiko Stadium, Emalasheni, Emalasheni uh, Banquet Hall, Mahikeng, Mahikeng Convention, and Cape Town Kukulet. Those who have registered for special votes must ensure that their voices are heard when they make their mark on the ballot paper on Saturday and Saturday. We'll continue to campaign until the last a possible uh, up until the last a possible minute. Tomorrow, the president will lead at the campaign trail addressing domestic workers, and uh, in the afternoon, he will be in Eguruleni. At the campaign trail of different officials will be made available as well as the campaign trail continues. On Friday, we will start the campaign trail in Sosolbeck, in the Free State, and in the Val, and then culminating in Mufulo Park. And then uh, all the venues of the Siangoba uh, that have been identified will be addressed by national executive and officials of the ANC. There will be a build-up to the main address of the president, which will take place at uh, 7 o'clock on Friday evening. There will be a build-up address, which details of that address will be availed to the media uh, so that uh, you can catch up with uh, the address of the different officials in different venues uh, across the country. Our Siangoba start in essence from tomorrow. In Devon, Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma will address our manifesto Siangoba rally in Eteguini region. The details of that will follow. Uh, on Friday, it is the venues that I've actually mentioned. In all our VDs throughout the country, tomorrow is Siangoba. Uh, we are certain of victory uh, going forward, and we are striving for, to for majority, overwhelming majority. Um, throughout this campaign, we have seen uh, the polls, and what they say, what we can get, we don't take that lightly. We have worked flat out uh, to talk to our people and we campaign till the end. As to what will come out of the end, we are confident that we have done our work and are given the response. To us, this majority is not a given. We work for it. We ask. And uh, our people have told us what they think of the ANC in the past five years. 
they have raised their views unapologetically and decisively, starting with our president on the campaign trail. The media have interpreted that as um, an opposition uh, to the ANC. It is fine. We don't uh, mind for things to be characterized as such. Um, but we have heard and we have listened to our people. They have spoken in their voices through their placards. And uh, we've got big challenges at local government. And the parameter weighs in on that in terms of what we are going to do, our manifesto. The parameter is not the replacement of the manifesto. It's our understanding of the challenges that we are facing and uh, of local government and what we need to do. And we put before you just a sample of some of the best performing municipalities we've got, notwithstanding where we've got challenges. And uh, Agurulene is the best performing municipality in the country among all metros, and uh, led by Etequini municipality. And all of these have been conducted independent from us. And the parameter you use of the AG have said Agurulene is number one in terms of clean audit. And clean audit is not the standard uh, for accounting is a standard that was imposed by the ANC, that we want to reach clean audit in terms of our municipalities. So Egurulene have reached that. Etegwini, News 24, and everybody have said that, not Cape Town, but Etegwini is number one. So if it was uh, us praising ourselves, it would have been something else. But this is what uh, independent polls stress outside the ANC have said uh, about us. So our parameter built on that. Big weaknesses in the system, but at the same time where we are going. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Andres. If there are questions, I would like to have tea with you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Comrade Mbalula. The, the tea invitation is, is open but it will be after we, uh, we close this session. Uh, thank, you, thank you very, very much to all of you for attending, and uh, we will see you on Election Day and beyond, and in uh, three months' time thereafter to report. Thank you very much.